Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the 2024 War of the Ring World Tournament, and this is round one, game two. Uh, spoiler alert if you have not seen the previous video for game one, I won game one. So, as Shadow, and I'm going to play Free People this game, we did not use any action tokens or anything like that, so let's jump in. I, um, let's see, my opening hand is obviously uh, quite good, having um, at least one playable card, and if Gondor activates, I could potentially play that, but I'm happy to see a Scouts, and Shadow got, I think, also very good cards. They allocate one, I roll one more, and I get this pretty flexible, uh, reasonable roll. Uh, I will not often play Horn of Gondor, but because I have a Palantir, I'm happy to cycle it. Um, I may wait to see if the Fellowship gets revealed and consider using this Palantir to hide the Fellowship if Strider is guide, preferring the army uh, muster die. But I think in general, I'm happy to happy to cycle a character card here. All right, I'll start by passing. They play the Balrog um, of Moria. Oh, and um, Potato actually messaged me after the first video and said um, her preferred pronouns are she, her. So I will try and remember to use them properly. So in any case, she played Balrog of Moria. And, um, you know, that's interesting. I think that I probably would have been more tempted to play Shadows on the Misty Mountain. Balrog of Moria is potentially good for corruption damage, certainly, but I don't know that I'm in a huge rush to play that. I don't know. Eh, that's fine. Uh, it is a good way of inflicting corruption damage on the Fellowship. It's just an extra tile draw, and sometimes it can be like an extra two tile draws. If you reveal the Fellowship going through Moria, then they end up getting an extra... Like if they're declaring straight into Lorien or straight into Moria or something like that, uh, or sorry, straight past Moria, then you can get a reveal and then get an extra uh, stronghold tile. I think if you're de if you're declaring into Lorien, then the reveal doesn't work. In any case, I play Horn of Gondor and redraw into Bilbo Song, a very good card. Not that I'm going to play it anytime soon, but it's nice to have in my back pocket. She musters Isengard to war. I move the Fellowship. That's reasonable. She misses, moves an army from Baradur to Gorgoroth. I move again, get hit, two hits this time, and a zero reveal. So obviously, I'm not super excited about a zero reveal because I'm going to be put in a tough position at the start of next turn, whether I want to change guides. And really, in general, I want to kill off Gandalf fairly soon, especially if I have this extra corruption shield from Horn of Gondor, so I'm not too worried about corruption. I mean, Balrog, yeah, it's still a little early on. Anyway, I get revealed. It's hard to know exactly where to go. Um, I end up going, where would you go? Would you go to the High Pass and avoid Moria because of the Balrog, or would you go towards Holland and be willing to go through Moria? So I, th I end up debating a bit and end up deciding on Holland. My current self agrees with my past self. Um, I, I, like, I like this play better because I want to try and kill off Gandalf. If I get two movement next turn, if I leave Gandalf as guide and get two movement, then I can hide and then move. And Shadow will probably be inclined to put some units on me in Holland. I guess we'll see. All right, so they get uh, Sar or she gets Saruman. Obviously, that's the right play. And I move armies. I don't normally go into Old Forest Road like this, but because uh, I have scouts, I'm very happy to get them into position. All right, she moves armies towards Lorien and from uh, Gorgoroth into Morinon. And we go to next round. I think this is a reasonable round one for both of us. I, you know, don't love getting revealed, but I'm happy with the card draw. All right, I decide to put Strider as guide, and I think that makes sense. I I really am not guaranteed to get 
to movement and I would like to continue making progress and I just want to make sure I can hide and move. And in the worst case, I can, if I get revealed into Moria, I can take a random companion and then as long, and then I can switch the guide before I take my stronghold tiles. So, all right, they decide to allocate two eyes here roll a bunch of musters, and I do get my two movement. So if I had known I was going to get two movement, maybe I would have done something differently. But all right, I hide using a muster. That's interesting. I guess that's what I want. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that I'm not just... Yeah, it's interesting. I'm not exactly sure why I'm not saving the muster for other purposes. All right, they play Shadows on Misty Mountains now. Obviously, that's excellent for them. And I move the Fellowship once, and they hit me, and then I get revealed. So, you know, if I knew all of this was going to happen, then then I would have just made Gandalf guide. But, all right, so at this point, at this point, do you take a random companion, hope that it's not Boromir, hope that it's not Strider, and if it, and the reason why I say hope it's not Boromir is because I would lose Horn of Gondor. Um, but then when getting revealed into Moria, I can make Gandalf the guide. So I think I probably risk a random here. Another option, another option is use Horn of Gondor, take one corruption, and then I'm probably going to get two tiles. One from Balrog, one from the Stronghold. I feel a little inclined to take a random now and just hope it's not Boromir. Let's see what Past Self did. So, all right. So I just take one from Horn of Gondor and uh, one Corruption. And then and then here's a three. So I think now I would risk, I would be inclined to risk a random tile now, a random companion now. I do take a random. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god! I didn't remember this game. I mean, this this game was from many months ago, so I I honestly had no idea that's what happened. Oh my gosh, that is so bad. All right, so horrible. I mean, wow, losing Strider uh, right there in Moria. That's not how the story is supposed to go. I should have left. <laughs> should have left Gandalf as guide. All right, so Strider is taken out and now um so i've just taken i've just taken five corruption and now the balrog has a chance if they want to if she wants to use it and she does and then an eye gets drawn so you know i guess that that is a nice a bit, bit of luck um there were two chances to draw an eye if an eye had been drawn on the stronghold tile or on the balrog tile either one of those would have been for zero uh so I don't know exactly what the odds are. I mean, we could figure it out. There's four, and it was four eyes in there, and there were 13, and then four. I guess there were 14, and then 13. So what's the chances of not pulling it are 10 out of 14 times 9 out of 13. I don't know exactly what that is, but it's probably pretty close to 50-50. Um, okay, so... That was that was a really unpleasant time in Moria. Holy cow. And I still haven't managed to kill off Gandalf because that was an eye. So I didn't I didn't kill off Gandalf. All right, they uh, she musters um Sauron to war. She, I passing she musters an elite in Moria. She draws a card. This is a character card. I mean, that makes sense if you're doing well on the character side of things. And then I hide the fellowship and just hope that I'm going to be able to make it out of there. And then she moves into Dimraldale, this massive army in Dimraldale. And I muster Gondor towards war because I just figure Lorien's a lost cause. Maybe at least I'll be able to defend Osgiliath. I mean, Osgiliath and Minas Tirith. And I don't want, um, I don't want to accelerate the Witch King, I guess is my thinking. So she musters Southrons and Easterlings towards war, and we go to next round. Flocks of Corbain, not too useful. And uh, what do I get? I get Smeagol helps nice master. Okay. And I am just hoping. Okay, so 
I'm just noting that she has three hunt rerolls. Yeah, that's awesome when you get three hunt rerolls. And she allocates two eyes again. Okay. Allocating three eyes rolls one more. And then I get only one movement and no will of the West. So pretty, pretty unpleasant. Um, I have a choice here. One option is to move right away. Another option is to use the Palantir to place Meagle Helps Nice Master, Axe and Bow, something like that. And my thinking is right now, better to move immediately because any sort of tile drawing card could be unpleasant. I mean, not a huge chance of getting me, but pretty unpleasant if I got revealed because then I wouldn't even be able to move this round without using a ring. So I, I assume I just move right away. All right, so I move right away and she gets <laughs> seven dice. That's incredible. When was the last time you've seen four dice with three rerolls on a hunt <laughs> while the fellowship is sitting in Moria? In any case, I get hit and then a two. So that's, you know, that's as good as I can hope for at this point. Gandalf goes and I make Boromir guide because I've already played Horn of Gondor and I still have Axe and Bow available. So she plays Candles of Corpses and gets two more hits. So I'm up to five Corruption. I just noticed that I moved the Corruption, the Fellowship Movement Track and not Corruption. Hopefully we'll catch that soon. Okay, she catches it. That's good. So we fix that. And then here I play Axe and Bow. Again, normally I would not be playing Axe and Bow and Horn of Gondor, but um, in this game I am worried about corruption already so it's good to play those cards if I have the time militarily and then she plays Flocks of Curbane again not a card that I see played very often but with this army in Dimmerald Dale you get the most benefit from Flocks of Curbane when you play it on the Fellowship's first movement I think and so being prepared to play it at the start of next round uh, makes sense so I'm I muster Rohan here that's interesting I guess, again, I just don't want to accelerate the Witch King, so that's why I'm not mustering in Lorien. I'm not mustering Elves. And because she's not currently threatening to come up to Woodland Realm. If this army in Morinon was also threatening to come up to Woodland Realm, then I might be tempted to muster the Elves so that once one of them goes under siege, I can muster in the other and put up a little bit of defense. But given that the other Elven Stronghold is... No other Elven Stronghold is currently under threat... I guess I'm just going for somewhere else. All right, interestingly, as soon as I said that, an army moves from Morinon to Daggerlad, Far Harad to Near Harad. I muster the north one towards war. I guess I just can't decide. Like, I don't know where she's attacking. So that is a nice job on her part to be obfuscating that. And then she, okay, so then she's coming towards Gondor. So Daggerlad to North Athelion. Nern to Gorgoroth with the idea of merging up eventually in Mor Minus Morval. And so I did muster Gondor one towards war already. So I guess I'm. it makes sense that, that she would be going after Gondor. Maybe it was wrong to muster the north and instead I should have just mustered Rohan again because Rohan can sometimes mess with or come down and defend in some way. So... I guess it is nice to have Gondor active so I could play the Red Arrow. All right, moving on to next round. I draw Power of Tom Bombadil and Elven Cloaks. She draws King is Revealed and the Nazgul Strike. I get rid of Swords and Ariador. And I declare the Fellowship out of Moria. So only two extra tiles in Moria. One from the Balrog, one from being revealed into Moria. And I make a joke about Boromir being guide. And two eyes allocated, four eyes rolled. Look, we got a hee hee. <laughs> hee hee was rolled. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, yeah, so she's allocating two eyes to keep up the corruption pressure. That's cool. Uh, this is ridiculous, right? Six eyes. Uh, six, six eyes is way too many. And especially with two rerolls. You can only roll five dice so when you're in mordor it, it, six eyes in the hunt pool would do six damage but outside of mordor you can only roll five dice so that's definitely overkill hopefully i'll roll will of the west 
and I do roll a Will of the West. Okay, so this is really as good as it gets for me. I'm happy to be playing these character cards. I'm happy to be getting Gandalf uh, at this point. And I'm, I don't even know. I wonder if I'm going to move none because just looking at this, I'm close to, oh, can I get, oh, Strider's dead. I was like, can I get Aragorn? No, you can't get Aragorn because Strider has already died. This could be a turn in some situations where you could get, you could get Strider. Anyway, um, so here we go. I start by, what am I starting to do? I'm moving the fellowship. Okay, so um, something's weird is happening with the, okay. So she uses flocks. Interesting. Feels like a little bit of overkill, but why not? You did play it. And um, okay, and we're correcting the track. So, so I should be at one right now, which is correct. And she uses flocks. And it didn't end up, looking at this, it didn't end up increasing the number of hits. So at some point you have diminishing returns if you're really rolling a lot of dice. But still, it you, you know, if you're devoting six eyes and an army and a card, it's nice to get the benefit. All right, so she said she was using Phlox, but we didn't actually move. Okay, there, we removed Phlox. It was a zero, so I didn't take corruption damage. That's good at least. And now she's moving armies to continue on. Now, this army movement from Timrel Dale to Parth Celebrant makes a lot of sense to me because it keeps the pressure on the fellowship, but I'm not sure it makes sense to move a single regular from from Moria into Dimrel Dale. I think what I would have done probably is move the entire army from Dimrel Dale into Parth Celebrant because it's just as close to, to Lorien. You can still attack Lorien from there. And then I would have just merged up this Gorgoroth to, to minus Morgul army. Or maybe, you know, near Harad to Umbar, something like that. Okay. Um, I hide. And then she passes. I get Gandalf. And then she attacks into Lorien. Okay, so if you know you're attacking into Lorien, then I think that makes sense. There was there was a permutation of this turn in which she could have attacked Osgiliath and gotten the Witch King, but then I would have been able to muster in Minas Tirith this turn because I had the last action die and even more next turn. So I think it makes sense to wait to wait once for the Witch King, especially because you want to keep corruption pressure on. So so that makes a lot of sense to me. So now I go ahead and play Smeagol Helps Nice Master. And we go to next round. I have Gwahir and Imrahil of Dol Amroth. And I'm guessing I'm discarding Power of Tom Bombadil, but maybe Gwahir. The thing about Gwahir that's nice is you can send Gandalf in to Minas Tirith or Lorien or something like that. So we'll see. I discard Gwahir. Okay. Yeah, I mean, getting the north to war is nice. It can do a lot to defend Dew, and I don't know that Dew is Dale, Erebor, Woodland Realm. It's these five victory points up here in the north. I, I don't know that she's ever going to attack up there, but if you don't, if it's free people, you never do anything to defend that. She can come in and, and have a strike up there really fast. So I'm, I guess I'm thinking Power of Tom Bombadil. And in terms of effective combat effects, the advantageous position is better than Gua here if I don't have companions on the board. So, all right. Uh, she allocates one eye, rolls one more, and then I get another very nice roll. A lot of flexibility. And because the Southrons are not at war yet, I'm not rushing to spend my Wills of the West. And I'm assuming that she's going to use this muster to get the Witch King, and therefore I can continue to wait on these Wills of the West. And if she does get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war, then I'll use one of them, and that's fine. Sometimes you might lose one Will of the West. That's that's generally okay with me if it means that I know for the rest of the game I won't have to worry about Day Without Dawn. So I move. I have to keep moving because I'm not going to win this game militarily. I mean, very unlikely, and because I don't have Aragorn. And, you know, as long as I can move once per turn, I'm pro maybe I'll get hit, maybe not. Even on five dice, if you're only getting hit on sixes, you have some chance of not getting hit. So, and that is exactly what occurs here. Great. So I was missed. I th was that the first hunt that missed this game? I mean, she's been allocating a bunch of eyes, so it's fair that she's been hitting me. But 
I think maybe that's the second hunt that missed because I think the very first move didn't didn't get it. Okay, so interesting. My past self agrees with my current self. And what does she do? She uh, attacks Asgiliath here. Okay, so Asgiliath is coming under attack. And I don't play a card. She plays Desperate Battle. That's interesting. I guess I was saving... I'm saving these scouts because I'm worried about Fords of Eisen. I don't know exactly why. Or maybe I just want to play Red Arrow as the card effect because it's a very nice card effect getting Rohan closer to war. All right, so she gets two hits, which is pretty nice. And I get one hit back. Oh, I see. I guess I wasn't particularly worried about the losing those two regulars because I would I know that it's going to put Gondor at war and therefore I can muster in Minas Tirith with the muster die that I have. So I muster into Minas Tirith. She attacks Minas Tirith, puts it under siege, and then I move the fellowship once. I think... Oh, I'm moving the fellowship again. Interesting. That surprises me a little bit. I, I guess I'm calculating... What am I calculating here? I, I'm a little surprised that I'm doing this move right now. I feel like I would have productive cards to play in the form of Red Arrow, Elven Cloaks, maybe even Power of Tom Bombadil. I could be saving this Wills, Wills of the West to maybe muster in Dol Amroth. I guess also Immerhill of Dol Amroth. Yeah, interesting. I guess my thinking is... All right, here's my thinking. On average, I'm only going to roll two and a half movement, and I don't have Strider to help me hide. So I better move when I can. I'm actually, if you count my current corruption, I have three corruption, but then I have eight points worth of corruption shield. So I'm actually at negative five corruption right now, plus this axe and bow. So I guess I'm thinking, yeah, it's going to pull more tiles out of the pool, which is not great. But I've put a blue tile in. I have another blue tile in my hand. Yeah, so maybe it makes sense to move move while I can. And if I get revealed, then, I mean, I'm almost certainly going to get hit. But then if I get revealed, uh, which is some chance, then I can use this Will of the West to hide again and keep making progress next turn. All right, so I move. She gets two hits, and it's a three. So, you know, it's fair to hit me. And I'm okay taking some corruption. It's nice not to get revealed. So I lose Boromir and Axe and Bow. That's fine. And then she plays Denethor's Folly. Obviously, that's excellent if you're besieging Minas Tirith. And then, interesting. Right. So, ha, huh, I forgot that I got rid of Denethor's Folly with that Will of the West. Um, I guess my thinking is, I have a lot of good cards. I have Daylight. I have Advantageous Position. I mean, maybe even Shield Wall. Um... So might as well use this Will of the West for that effect. That's very rare that I see Denethor's Folly go away with the Will of the West. This is a cool game. <laughs> I don't remember what's happening. This is fun. All right. Uh, so she moves armies towards West Herondor. Uh, now note that the Southrons and Easterlings are not yet at war. So I have a little bit of time. If I had used instead those Wills of the West to muster a bit, Maybe I should have. I'm not super worried about Corsairs because if Corsairs come, I can get one. If if a <clears throat> army pools in Umbar, I can muster once into Dol Amroth. And then once Dol Amroth comes under siege, I can muster uh, using Immerhill of Dol Amroth. So I guess that's my thinking. I play Elven Cloaks because I want to do everything I can to help the Fellowship. And we know there are going to be relatively few tiles in the pool once I make it to Mordor. And the Witch King shows up. All right. That seems fair. Turn five, Witch King is not a super fast Witch King. All right. So she allocates just one eye and then rolls none. So let's see what I get. And I get this crazy movement. So, yeah, it's interesting to have switched strategies. So she basically switched to a more military strategy this turn and then just didn't roll eyes because... Maybe she was just, you know, feeling frustrated about getting getting too many eyes. Um, and then it looks like she just drew Corsairs of Umbar and has no army movement. So pretty unpleasant. Looking at her hand, I would think that 
there's going to be, I would anticipate an army movement, uh, a Nazgul strike. I would think that once I move, there can be a Nazgul strike that will let you get a um, Nazgul to West Herondor, and then you can use a character movement to move them back to Umbar and then play Corsairs that way. That's probably what I would do because you don't really want to let this muster up a huge amount. I have three movement to make it to Mordor. We'll see what I do. So my thinking is I definitely want to get the fellowship going against only one eye. That's incredible. So, <laughs> but she, but she hits me anyway on a single die. That's awesome. What a game. All right. And I get revealed. Okay. So that's incredible. I love that. So what do you do now? You're taking one corruption. <laughs> that was unlikely, I say. Uh, so I get a random companion, um, which is good. That's more efficient use of my corruption. And uh, Mary is now in Westamnet, which is really cool to have Mary in Westamnet. All right. Fellowship is revealed. And then I get a Morgul wound. So um, what's interesting is sometimes a shadow, you allocate eyes, you put it, you spend a lot of time keeping armies on, you know, the fellowship and, uh, and then sometimes you hit them, sometimes you don't. And then sometimes you put only one eye in, roll none, and then you still get results like this where you're hitting and revealing them. So there is just some randomness in the game and you have to sort of ride the wave. So I'm up to five corruption now. So this is obviously worse. Uh, than it was a second ago. Um, I hide in case she has other nasty things for the fellowship. She gets the um, the South South Rounds and Easterlings to war now. And now I can still make it to Mordor. I'm not sure that I want to, but because I don't know that I need to push that hard, but I notice that she only has one eye. So statistically, just the odds of getting hit here are relatively low. So I think I'm going to move. Wow, I didn't move. Okay. So why didn't I move? Why didn't I move? Am I... I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. Okay, so I guess my thinking is she could attack into Helm's Deep, potentially, I guess. Like new power is rising and um, new powers rising and something something else maybe, uh, like Ring Wraiths are abroad. And so she could get into Helm's Deep. So I want to save this Will of the West to be able to move armies. And there's a possibility that she's going to come towards Dol Amroth. So I, want, I just want to be flexible about it. And I guess my thinking is I'm not in such a rush to get to Mordor. I will move one more time with with this character die but maybe i'm not going to move two more times this turn it does mean that she could put she could spend a character die to move a nazgul onto the fellowship which would which would be sad for me but i don't yeah i guess what what am i thinking i'm thinking if she has day without dawn i want to have this character die to be able to move into helms deep yeah, I don't know. That's a little confusing. All right. So she attacks Minas Tirith. I guess maybe I just thought she wasn't going to put the Fellowship, put a Nazgul on the Fellowship. All right. She attacks into Minas Tirith, and now I'm worried she's going to cycle character cards. Okay, she plays a strategy card, and I'm feeling glad seeing that strategy card. I'm like, man, am I glad Denethor's Folly is done? We kicked Denethor out. See you later, Denethor. Uh, let's have a last battle. Yeah. So... Daylight, of course, against Deadly Strife. That's the best you can do. And she gets... She still gets three hits. All right, fair enough. You expect... On on, on three dice with three re-rolls, re I think you expect more than two, right? Yeah, you expect 2.25 hits. So it's not unreasonable to still get three hits. Uh, but I get... Three hits. Which is probably close to what we expect also because I have no leadership. Okay. So she takes three, I take three, and then the combat's over. So I just I 
I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I waiting? <laughs> she can start cycling character cards or something. Maybe I should move and see what happens. So I figure it out and I move. All right. So yeah, I, I think this is better. I, I on some there are some benefits to waiting, but I think it's better to not wait in this situation. It's certainly with that character die. Um, okay, and it seems like I don't know. Maybe she has day without dawn. Maybe she doesn't. But all right. Oh, great! Look at this. <laughs> I, sh I think I should have done that last action instead of passing. Great. So um, interesting to see how the analysis works. All right. So then she plays Nazgul Strike. That seems excellent. She moves Nazgul onto the Fellowship. She gets this Nazgul onto West Herondor. Okay, great. And then rolling for the hunt here. And she hits, and it's an eye. So, you know, that happens. I take one. Am I going to get a random again? Okay, so, you know, two-thirds chance. I don't think I want to take any more corruption. I want to get to Gollum as soon as I can. Because Gollum can, first of all, help me with these uh, tiles that don't reveal me, that wouldn't reveal me with Gollum. And second of all, I can save corruption. I can save a bunch of corruption if the military is holding out okay. So... I'm going to continue to lose companions. Might as well take a random. Might get lucky and get a hobbit. But I don't. There's Legolas. So, so i revealed. This hunt has been pretty tough. So um, this was like the one turn that she didn't like go put a lot of resources into hunting me. And yet she still hit me three times, which is cool. Uh, Twice. Twice. Hit me twice. All right. Um, so she uses the muster on Orthanc. And Minas Tirith gets attacked now. And I'm staying revealed. Okay, so that's interesting. It is a little risky to stay revealed. But my thinking is I need to save this Will of the West to be able to deal with Helm's Deep, I guess. I guess that's my thinking. Dreadful Spells against Minas Tirith. Two hits. That is nice for her. And then I use this muster... In Dol Amroth. Yeah, I, this is probably a mistake. I, I, th I think I'm remembering um, thinking about this in the past. Um, I I should have just mustered an elite in Dol Amroth. Yeah. Okay. So then she had probably, I think. She, because that one extra regular in Pilar gear, I don't think it's going to matter that much. Okay, anyway, she attacks into Minas Tirith, gets the two that she needs, and I get no hits. So that's her first two victory points. Obviously, she's not moving super fast militarily, but she should be able to take Lorien. She should probably be able to take Dol Amroth, especially because I've not seen Corsairs, and she does have Corsairs, so that's a good reinforcement from Umbar into Dol Amroth if she needs it. And then she should be able to take Rohan, or maybe if I let down my guard, she can sneak in somewhere in Do. All right, so... Oh, right. I muster more regulars here. Yeah, so that maybe that first leader was good, but probably should have done a second a second muster, uh, you know, the second muster could probably have been an elite. All right. So I get another scouts, which I'm happy to see. What do you keep here? Obviously file. And yeah, that was an interesting die usage because I could have, I could have played one of these cards. I could have played file. Um, could have played Aylmer. Like there were a lot of cards I could have played. So now I have a second scouts. Do you keep two scouts? Do you, I mean, definitely keeping Mithril Coat, definitely keeping File, definitely keeping Bilbo Song. I feel like Aomer, Immerhill of Dol Amroth, like these are all good. I think I have to get rid of his scouts. Um, so I get rid of Spirit of Mordor instead of Red Arrow. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know that I'm ever going to play Red Arrow and sometimes you might play Spirit of Mordor, if she reinforces uh, like a strong uh, siege with um, Ulug Hai down here or Half Orcs and Goblin Men, something like that. Anyway, she allocates one eye and rolls three more, and I get two movement, so that's fine. I hide now. She musters in, she uses the voice to get three regulars in, Ortha, in Isengard. I pass here. 
It's a little weird while I'm passing. I guess there's there's not as cool search. Um, I'm not sure why I'm passing there. Okay. More Isengard units. So she's mustering up a bunch. And then I go ahead and move now. Okay. And then she hits me and I get revealed. So I just take one guaranteed because looking at the hunt pool, um, I just don't want to risk the, that's weird. I mean, what, what if I roll, draw another one? Um, I just don't want to risk losing Gimli. Yeah. All right. Um, I take one and then there's another one and now I take a random here and now Gimli goes. All right. So, you know, that was, I think, relatively poorly played. Better to take the random on the first one and then lose the Hobbit on the next one. And then I'd be with Gollum. Um, so I don't have any reveals, regular reveals left in the pool. So I guess it doesn't really matter to get to Gollum at this point. Maybe that's what I was thinking. But there was, at the time I made the decision to keep Gimli, there was one reveal left in the pool. So, all right. I, um, okay, she doesn't have anything to punish me for being revealed. At least I'm safe from cruel weather. That's a small silver lining. And she musters in Orthanc. And then I play Aomer into Helm's Deep. She attacks in Lorien. Okay, it's fair to get Lorien out of the way. And then if this army has excess units, it can come down and help in Rohan. So this seems pretty good. Sh strategy card. Great host seems very strong. I don't have anything useful to play. So I could play, I could play Immerhill of Dol Amroth, but I'm using it for combats that are going to be closer. Like this combat is not going to be that close. So great host. She gets two hits. I get one hit back. It's three total. She presses, which makes sense. No card, no card. She gets two hits. And Lorian has fallen. So at least I got two hits back with the elves. But this is now still a giant army that can do very productive things. The elves are at war, though. All right. I muster finally an elite into Dol Amroth. And she attacks into Pilar gear. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It would be slightly faster to... Um, retreat to Umbar and then play Corsairs. But I think I like this better because then you have Pilar gear taken and you're not worried about Dead Men of Dunharrow because there is no Strider. There is no Aragorn. He has perished. He was lost in Moria years ago. All right. Um, she attacks into Pilar gear, gets one hit. I get one back. And that's about what we'd expect. I retreat, and then I retreat into Osgiliath. So, I don't know. I guess that's fine. Um, so the thing that I did not account for with Osgiliath, I'm thinking, it's fine. I have Imrahul of Dol Amroth. These two regulars in Osgiliath will be able to do something like mess with Pelargir. If she'll, she'll have to leave some units behind. But I think I forgot about so I played File of Galadriel, and then I forgot about the shadows moving. So this is a this is something that is very efficient for her. I think this is just a, one of the most beautiful plays of shadows moving I've seen in a long time. It just gets all of her armies into the right positions. So yeah, great. And I should have retreated to Lamadon. Yes, past Ira, you agree. All right, so I leave only two regular. The, she only leaves two regulars and Minas Tirith because these two regulars can't take it, and then she's moving these elites, this this army to reinforce Pilar gear. So this is just a really nice shuffling of armies around. Plus she gets two more, which is bringing the Witch King down to take out Rohan, and then getting prepared to have a reserve force in Orthanc while to protect against Ents while still moving and attacking Rohan. So just really, really beautiful getting armies into the right position. That was super cool to see. Um, and what's cool about that is I could have done something about it if I had retreated to Lamadon. And I think the default often is Lamadon. Um, and that would have, that would have changed the whole tempo of, of this whole thing. 
All right, so I declare into Mount Doom. I have six corruption with one corruption shield. So it's effectively, I'm at five corruption starting up the Mordor track, which is not good, really not good. Only five dice. Um, the one saving grace is there are no red tiles in here and generally relatively small values. I have eaten a lot of the threes and um, some of the twos. So these ones are going to be pretty pleasant. And the eyes, if she does not roll too many eyes, uh, then the eyes can also be acceptable. So she allocates one, only rolls one more, and I get this, oh God, what a painful roll. I mean, <laughs> right? Like, I can't even, this attack is going to happen into Helm's Deep, and I don't have an army muster or a will of the West or an extra character die to get, uh, who is this, Pippin? To get Mary and these Rohirrim into Helm's Deep without using a ring. And do you really want to use a ring to do an army movement when the Fellowship is in Mordor? I mean, it's just painful. All right, so um, we're commiserating about my role. And uh, I, interesting. So I use a ring. I use a ring to reinforce Dol Amroth here. So I guess my thinking is, right, and I didn't even get any muster. So my thinking is, if I can get this elite into Dol Amroth now, then I can use Immerhill of Dol Amroth to reinforce it because there's a decent chance this isn't going to fall in, in one turn. She's probably going to stop the combat. And I need to hold either Helm's Deep or Dol Amroth. What are my best chances? Best chances are to hold Dol Amroth. So let's let's spend the ring on that instead of the ring moving from West of Net into Helm's Deep. If I had a bunch of Ent cards in my hand, maybe I'd feel differently. I do have this single uh, Ent card, which is good, but not enough necessarily to sway the tide. We'll see. So I use a ring for that. And then she puts Dol Amroth under siege. I hide the fellowship. She moves armies into Orthanc and into Eastamnet. And um, then I play Mithrakot and Sting now. I don't know why. I could just pass. It would have been fine to pass. So the one saving grace about all these Palantirs is I do have you know, effective cards that can help protect the fellowship. This Mithrakot and Sting and Bilbo Song, which both of which I've been saving for quite some time, are are useful here. So it's not horrible to get to play them. I she attacks into Fords, and I have the scouts that I saved. So that's at least something in Helm's Deep. And she leaves four behind in Orthanc, which is a beautiful number. Uh, I cannot possibly take out Saruman with Ents, so that's great. And uh, I draw a, what the heck, strategy card. Why am I drawing a strategy card here? I have no idea. Um, I just don't know. It doesn't really make sense to me. So who knows? And then she puts Helm's Deep under siege. And that's just the nature of that role. I had too many Palantirs and could not. Uh, I just didn't have Dol Amroth in order and Helm's Deep in order and had to spend a ring to even keep one of them better equipped. All right. Uh, she is thinking what to do. She attacks into Westamnet. I think that makes a lot of sense. And she plays Foul Stench and gets the three hits. See you later, Mary. And I get one hit back. Sad. So, you know, that happens. And on top of that, like, this is also a situation where if I had more musters, I could muster an Edoras or Fold and just make it slightly slower to take over Rohan. But because Lorien went so well and she did a nice job mustering up in Moria in advance, and then she was able to come down and take this, this is going to be a super efficient capture of, of Rohan. So... She redraws a red tile, which is great. And I now I'm like, right, I should be drawing character cards. That's my only hope. 
So I draw a character card and then she plays ring is mine. And then she uses a ring to take, um, to take over Rohan entirely. I'm a little surprised to see this, these elites in fold with the witch King. I would have expected not as many, I guess her plan. She's been saving shadows gather, I think for a little while. So I guess this is a shadows gather play, Witch King into Lasarnach is the plan. So it's not, it's not looking great for me. Uh, I have to hold either Dol Amroth or Helm's Deep. And I'm almost certainly not going to be able to destroy the ring in one, in one round. All right, so I can probably pretty easily get rid of House of Stewards. And then what else? I don't know. She draws a reinforcement card, which is nice, and Grand, which is nice. Let's see what she gets rid of. Lidless Eye, I think that makes sense. It's probably the weakest combat effect, and she can just win militarily. I get rid of Fear Fire Foes because... I'm not going to play it for the card effect and therefore shield wall compared to these other ones. I'm, I'm happy with these other ones. It, it was honestly, that's probably a slight mistake. I think that I can write off, I can probably write off Helm's Deep and, and therefore maybe it doesn't make sense to keep this end and instead keep the shield wall and just play all of them in Dol Amroth. But I don't know. I mean, Nameless Wood, there, there is some chance that I could turn the battle in Rohan. If she gets a bad roll and I get a good roll, like this can, this is a bunch of extra hits. So it's okay. I can, I can see keeping that end card. All right. So she allocates one eye and only rolls one more. I'm happy generally to see low, um, low, low character dice. And uh, I mean, low eyes. And now this is actually a situation where I could theoretically destroy the ring. I think it's extremely unlikely because I would have to dodge this red tile and all of these eyes for every move. So it's just it's just statistically incredibly unlikely. We could we could calculate it, but um, I will leave that as an exercise to the viewer. What are the odds of on this turn being able to destroy the ring? And by the end, there would be six eyes. There would be six eyes in here. I mean, uh, these two eyes plus my plus my four movement. So eyes would be doing six damage. Honestly, that's probably okay because, um, well, no, probably not okay. <laughs> it's probably not okay. I mean, I was thinking I could heal some and I might, but these gray tiles will do some damage too. So um, I think my plan here is move some this turn, play you know, Bilbo Song, be, pre be prepared to play Imrahil of Dol Amroth, and then just hold one of these strongholds and then destroy the ring next round. That's my thinking. So I start by moving because I don't want more red tiles to go in and I don't have more red tiles, to, or blue tiles to add myself. And we get a one. So this is, this is a moment to decide, do I want to reveal and sort of commit to not destroying the ring? And I think, you know, is one, is one character die one character action worth a corruption is basically what I'm considering. And I think the answer is yes. I'm assuming I'm going to reveal. We'll see. Yeah, I reveal because my corruption is just too high. I'm at six corruption. I mean, so in situations like this, you have to read the hunt pool and say, look, you can't make it without doing some reveals unless you get super lucky. So instead of hoping to get super lucky by moving on Mount Doom and you know, winning a uh, stronghold, maybe just put your luck in the stronghold, winning one stronghold basket, and then just play for normal luck in the, in the hunt. So that's my thinking. Um, funny. <laughs> my, my, my past self and my current self are seeing the same things. So Gollum isn't guide yet. I can't do this whole reveal thing. Instead, I get to lose Pippin. So all of that is way better. Uh, I stay hidden and don't, and I don't take corruption. Great. <laughs> uh, all right. So now Gollum is guide. Now I'm at six corruption, but I'm hidden. So that's better. I'm happy to have those character dice to be able to play Bilbo Song, to be able to move and hide again. So that's fine. All right. She can't play Breaking the Fellowship now. So that was confusion. That was confusing. Uh, my bad. She moves armies. She merges into... 
uh, Helm's Deep, and she merges into Fold. Um, she thinks. She... Uh, she's thinking... Okay, she doesn't do that merge. Instead, she, which is, I think, right, she does the Shadows Gather first. So she goes one, two, three, and now there's this beautiful army in La Sarna, which is going to be able to come and defend uh, or to support Dol Amroth. So I'm feeling quite a bit sadder now. Um, it's going to be harder to hold uh, Dol Amroth. So I think she's playing really well here. I And she's planned that out. I mean, remember, she's looking many, many moves ahead. Um, to, to do that move and to fold, to foresee the shadows gather, to foresee all of this. And, and I do think like playing, she didn't know for sure she was going to get a Palantir, she's going to get enough attacks, any of that, but you played your outs. And so she can assume, look, I'm going to get a couple of Palantirs. I can, I can plan for that and make efficient use of them. So that's awesome. All right. So I move and, um, you know, I don't love getting an eye here. That is not as good as a blue tile, but it's not a red tile, right? That's not, it's not the red stop. And the red stop is going to kill me. These eyes probably won't kill me. And I still have Bilbo Song. So while I don't like taking three corruption, I'm willing to, I'm willing to eat it. So um, I'm not going to use Mithril Code and Sting on that, especially when there's a red tile in there. So she, interestingly, she did not play. We knew that she had... Breaking the Fellowship, she did not play Breaking the Fellowship right here. So she's sort of, hey, I'm just going to go win the military game. And if I'm counting correctly, she has one, two, three movements to get into Dol Amroth. Uh, then Grand, so that's another use of this um, Palantir. And then one more attack to take out Helm's Deep. So she can win, she can win this, this round. Uh... So she's just taking her time. She knows. She, so that was an Edoras to Westmnet move, which is which is just precision because she knows that um, she's going to have one attack in Helm's Deep and she's going to have one attack in Dol Amroth. Um, yeah, this is beautifully planned. So the reason why she did not play breaking is because she's going to she's going to try and win militarily this round. All right, so I hide. She moves armies as planned, and she has enough of a um, backup force in Pilar gear. Plus, I'd have to spend an eye. I just, I can't, I mean, a ring. I can't, I can't retake Pilar gear. So she has the right amount of force. She's taking all of the elites because she wants to guarantee the maximum capacity of army in Dol Amroth. So this is just really, really nicely played. All right. Um, she attacks Helm's Deep. And... She needs to win this, and then she's going to move armies with uh, the Witch King, and then she will uh, play Grand. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Okay, so strat she is playing a strategy card here. I I'm not sure you need it, but who knows, because lots of things can happen. All right, so she plays We Come to Kill here. It's fine. You know, this is minor, but I would have been slightly more tempted to play out the uh, Dol Amroth battle first because then with the one card you play for the Witch King, you get to, you're going to get to redraw a card and then you can use that in the Siege of Helm's Deep because this way she can use the card that she redraws in Dol Amroth in the Dol Amroth siege, but maybe there's, you know, you might want to know which is which. I, I don't know. This is it's minor. I, I don't even know if that's right. Okay, so I play my end here because if I have any hope of winning this battle, I just need to get some insane luck in, in this in this combat. I mean, this is, this is a 16 hit point army against a five hit point army. So she has more than triple and she's playing combat cards like we come to kill with six elites. So, um, all right. So she starts off with two hits and I get three hits plus two more. So I get five hits. That's respectable. I do have two leadership. So that, that helps. So she takes five. She takes five. No problem. 
Uh, and then she still gets to roll five dice. We Come to Kill gets one more. So I'm down to two. And I'm facing 11 hit points. So I'm not going to be playing any more combat cards. I'm going to be saving them for Dol Amroth. And again, maybe it, maybe it made sense to have that end for that combat. Maybe I should have just let that one go. But that is what it is. Okay, so she gets her two hits now. I get two hits back, but it doesn't matter. Rohan is captured. We can see the end coming. Um, the Malthusorum shows up in Minus Morgul. And I play Imrahil of Dol Amroth now because I can see that um, there is not going to be a chance to refill. Like there's just, there's, there's only going to be one attack total against Dol Amroth. So I might as well play this now to give myself one extra leadership and one extra hit point because otherwise it's just not going to, nothing's going to go. So um, like the game ends if she takes it. So she moves armies exactly as anticipated. Now I think this is a very minor misplay, but I probably would have moved this elite in as well into Dol Amroth over stacking and then you lose a regular. But you just want to win the the game right now. So I think that's what I would have done. All right. Now, interestingly, I do not move here. So this is risky because I'm only rolling five dice. I expect to get um, two and a half movement plus I can use a ring. So three and a half movement, but that's not like it might not happen. Um, I have to, I have to like, not get revealed. Am I thinking about this? No, I'm just maybe better to move <laughs> my past self. Okay. So nope, I decide. I did. I decide to go with Bilbo. So my thinking is one, I have to hold Delamroth. That's just how it goes. Like I absolutely have to do that. Maybe the luck will go in my favor. Maybe not. So I'm just going to assume I'm going to hold it. Uh, then the question is what's going to happen next round. Could I destroy the ring with three moves on three corruption? I don't know. I think my my thinking was, look, if you move right now against with four eyes in the pool, uh, you just lose the game. Like these four tiles just instantly lose you the game right now, guaranteed, if you if you move. So that seems unpleasant. Like to risk losing the game, I think I'm happy to just you know gamble on um, gamble on enough character cards, character dice next round. Plus I do have Mithril Coat. So like, it's probably not going to do it, but better, better to wait. All right. So here we go. Here's Gron, right? We, we foresaw this. She planned this beautifully. Let's see how Gron goes. We have a total of, uh, 14 hit points against eight hit points. And I did manage to get three leadership in there. So that's actually like quite high amount of leadership which is going to dish back a good amount of damage, like a good amount of expected damage every round. Um, and I've saved, I've saved some good combat cards to use here. All right. Um, beautiful, right? I mean, she's just playing this perfectly. This is Grand into Deadly Strife because um, I can't play a card. So if I have Daylight, which I do, uh, I can't even play it because it's the first round of Grand. So I just have to hope. Expected expected damage here is three and a half, I think, something like that. So she got three. She got four. So, you know, that's slightly more than expected, but, you know, it's not unreasonable. Deadly Strife is incredible. Um, let's see what I get back. I get four back. So I can't trade evenly. It's I will lose this... this um, combat if I trade evenly, but at least I'm dishing out four. It's not, it's not like I'm not giving up hope yet. So I still have four regulars left. Not great, but it's something. She gets an automatic press from Gron. She plays another strategy card. And of course now I'm playing, I think I'm playing my daylight now. So I play my daylight now and you know, Makes sense. She gets three hits. Really good. Really good. And I get four hits back. All right. So that's something. 
Um, and now she left. She she just took four hits. And now we're in round three. She's leaving herself with two elites, I guess, because she just wants to make sure she can press as much as possible. Um, she has deadly strife here. So I play confusion. Interesting. So I guess, I guess my thinking is if there's any hope, I just have to hope. Let's see what she gets. Uh, and that's the end of that. So... You know, she planned this out uh, really beautifully. I think that was just well played all around. Um, some really nice pressure on the Fellowship early game with corruption. And then this really nice, just really nice end, uh, you know, ending turn with military. I did have a few, um, like one round with particularly awkward dice, but... You know, if I had played differently with the Lamadon retreat, if I had mustered another elite into Dolamroth, like having an extra elite in there, I wouldn't have needed to spend a ring to get um, to get one extra leader. So, um, and that ring let her take Edoras and fold much more efficiently. So, and she really was playing down to the down to the last action this round without the reinforcement from the Witch King, it, she wouldn't have been able to, I don't think she would have been able to take to Lamroth the way she did. I mean, on top of that, there was Grant. So those little, those little things can add up. And uh, that's that. All right, let's look at statistics. So you can see that uh, these were swapped, Free People and um, Shadow. So you can see she was quite positive on sixes. Um, you know, but... She was pretty, she was negative on attacks. So she, she made very efficient use of her, of her Palantirs. And um, yeah, that was the game. I mean, I think that was really well played on her part and uh, just a fun, fun one to, fun one to watch again. And uh, we'll see what happens in game three. Have a good rest of the day.